And welcome to the Peterson Events Center. It is the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pit Panthers Radio Network. And subbing in for Jeff today, well, you know, we had to take a big guy to fill in for Jeff Capel. <laughs> Dewan Blair is joining us to co-host. Dewan, how are you? I'm good, man. Welcome back. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. So now it's all on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is, this is a little different for me. <laughs> you know, we're going to get through it. We mentioned before that you're back to school yep. here at Pitt. Yep. What's that transition been like to be in classes again? Uh, of course, just being the oldest, you know, in the class. <laughs> <laughs> You because know. that's the only way they would notice you. Do any of those kids remember you playing? Yeah, a couple of them do. Yeah, a couple of them. Uh, not <laughs> this, this, this is this new generation. Remind, remind us again, though, why it was so important for you to go back and get your degree. Um, just, you know, basketball is, is, uh, is not going to always be here. Um, I was blessed to uh, play <clears throat> eight years in the league, you know, um, so mean learning a lot and you know wanting to learn a lot more you know off the court so that's why I came back and just trying to get back into the groove of what what, what my next journey is going to be. So it's funny because you go from being a student athlete where you're just I mean you're going all the time to then right. all right I don't have to worry about school I can just play the game right now you're back into the classroom which right. has to be obviously an, an adjustment. Big adjustment um sitting in the class you know for three hours and <laughs> like wow, like, you know, I had to really adjust to that, and uh, it's, it's 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 been real tough, you know. But Pitt's been great, you know. Um, they they provide me with every, anything I need, you know, as far as you know, tutor and anything. Hey, I want to ask you about draft night. I want to ask you about the Spurs playing for Greg Pop Popovich as we continue. It's Dewan Blair in for Coach Capel on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. I know this isn't a fun night, but take us back to what it was like draft night. Before coming, leading up to the draft, I was going places and working out, you know, just working out for multiple teams. And I really thought I was going to go to Chicago. I thought I was going to go top 10 to Sacramento, probably. I don't know. But uh, that didn't work out. You know, um, 10 didn't work out, and then 15 didn't work. And then. It's just coming, like, my name's not getting called, so I'm just, you know, just down, and I just go to the weight room, and I was just lifting weights, you know, just trying to get it off my mind and everything. After, like, 33, I went upstairs, and I just thought it was over. I was in the middle of the hallway. My family and them in the room, they keep screaming. They thinking, they say, Dewan Summers. <laughs> oh, no. So, so it was like, ah. Oh. No. So I was just in the hallway, and then when they called my name, I didn't even hear it. Or really? I didn't see it or nothing. I was so, just... so they didn't call you before to say, hey, we're about to pick you? No. It was just uh, Spurs got a steal. <laughs> were you like instantly motivated? Like, all right, I'm going to get course. there. And... Of course. That was, that was the whole thing. It was, it was pretty good, but I couldn't have, I landed in the perfect spot. You know, I wouldn't have asked for nothing. Why? Why was it perfect? Because <clears throat> just coming into that, uh, just coming into the San Antonio you know, organization, and they're a family organization. You know, it's just, <clears throat> I was a little brother, you know, um, Tim, T Tony, Manu, Coach Pop, <clears throat> um, all of them, it, they opened me with, um, you know, open arms, and they made me feel wanted. And it, w it was like, you know, they drafted me for a reason. Tim Duncan it seems so quiet. What's oh. he, what was he like? <clears throat> Tim is definitely not quiet. Really? Yeah, uh, he's a different person, but, just coming under his wing and, and just enjoying, you know, just being there every day and be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm headed to work and I get to battle with him, you know, every day. And it was, he would, he would teach me so much stuff and, and, and show me the ropes in every city. And, you know, it was just, I was real blessed to land where I landed. So I want to ask you about that. You came from tough practices here at Pitt. Oh, yeah. Did you ever have a, t have a time where you were at practice there where you're going full and they're like, Whoa. Yeah, it definitely did because San Antonio being such an older team, you know, even when I, when I started, uh, they were in their prime and, and uh, it wasn't a lot of, they, they knew the system so much that they wouldn't practice. You know, Spurs wouldn't practice at all because all we did was reps of, of plays and, you know, just learning the system every day. It was, it was just so fun. And being a young guy, I was the only rookie, so 
other than going to go get the donuts every every morning. <laughs> Did you really have to go get donuts? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> other than that, everything was great. <laughs> <laughs> what makes Popovich so great? He brings the best out of all his players. It don't matter who it is. You know, um, he 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 sets a standard. He sets, you know, he'll he'll scream at the 14th player, and he's screaming at Tony and Tim and Mom. Same. He, it's the same way. He don't. It's no favors, you know. He know he, he know who his, his golden ticket is, and but he hold everybody to the same standards, and that just gives you, you know, make you more comfortable. Like, okay, we all mess up. He's just tough. He's he's big on discipline, but at the same time, he's a great. Did you have fun with him? Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still talk to him till this day. Do you? you know, that's uh, he, he's a real important um, person in my life right now. You know, especially when my father passed, and so he's been talking to me every day, and, and you know. Just, just being there, you know, being a good friend. All right, Dewan, I think we need another post player here for your show. Yeah, yeah, today. yeah. So we're going to bring in Ontario Lett. Big O. Big O is going to join <laughs> us next. Dewan Blair co-hosting for Jeff Capel on the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. just has it all. Everyone is on their feet. We just witnessed history. Hit Beyond the Script, weekly on AT&T Sportsnet. All right, Dewan Blair here for Coach Capel today and joined by another big man, Ontario Lett, who is back in town. Yes, Ontario, sir. welcome back, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, it's, before we get started here, I, I, I've been curious. So in your days, if there was one basketball and you two, <laughs> and you guys are going one-on-one, -on -one, what's, what's happening there? Uh, yeah, it's going to be... It probably wouldn't even be basketball. It'd probably turn to something else. We'd probably be, <laughs> we'd be fighting or something, just getting after two. You guys were about seven years apart. Well, I came out in '03, so yeah, you know, not that many. Yep. Yeah. No, not that many. But you were just Ben. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. So you were Ben Howland. Mm -hmm. yeah. Juan was Jamie. Mm -hmm. I I would imagine. Did you guys ever compare practices or talk about practices or what that was like? I mean, I can only imagine Ben. I mean, I heard stories about Ben and uh, how how tough he was in practice. I don't know. Yeah, but it was more or less just the same format. The practice was still the same format, and that's why we still same, the, the same format. way. What was the format? We getting out there. Yeah, you know, we very competitive in every drill and yeah. very physical. You know, you couldn't come. You had to come to work every day. Yeah. You know, people's gonna be getting after you if you don't. So you had to come and play every day, and it's physical and it's very competitive. Ontario, you came up after a couple of years in Florida, your home mm -hmm. state. What attracted you? What about Pitt attracted you? Well, you know, I really like, I'm back now because I really love the city. I really like the city. And then at that time, we was playing in the Big East. So, it's you not know. Not for the weather? It's not why you came up? No, I came up in um in August and I was cold when I got off the bus. <laughs> yeah, I was cold in August when I got here. And and people was asking me, hey, man, do you have a coat? I said, no, I have a jacket. They said, no, you need a coat. And I never, I didn't know the difference. Really? Yeah, coming from Florida. So yeah. they took me and got me a coat and boots and everything. So, no, it definitely wasn't the weather. <laughs> but the style of play, you know, being in the Big East, yeah. physical, 
you know, our teams was all built like how we built, strong and competitive playing side. So it had only been a couple of years where Pitt had kind of turned the corner when you got here. Mm -hmm. What was it about those teams? Like, what made them win? Everybody was competitive. Like, I talked to Coach Zig, and he just said, man, y'all practices just used to be very just brutal because everybody was competitive. All guys had chip on their shoulders. We had two-star, three-star guys, you know, and so it was just getting after it every day and just very competitive. So you don't have to have four or five stars in front of your name to be a good team? No, no, you definitely oh, no. don't. Mm -mm. Ooh. Nah. You got to have some chemistry. That's why I keep saying, mm -hmm. you know, once coach – Coach find that and understand, like, once the players understand that chemistry and, you know, just, just knowing what, you know, pit basketball is all about, you know, I think mm -hmm. we did a great job of setting the standards of what it should be like so they can't overlook that. They can't try to just change just because the color changed back. Right. You can't just, you know. All right. Let, let's, I want to mention that. <laughs> when you look at the uniforms now, what's your reaction? Yeah, it was old school colors. I used to like, you know, Dan Marino and Tony Dorsett and those guys. But, like, when I played, it was different from them because they was we was Pittsburgh. We had Pittsburgh yeah. all the way across. And we was Adidas yeah. at the time. So. We, was, we was Navy, Navy and gold. And you now just you had see, Pitt, right? Yeah, we yeah. Just, now you see those colors pop. And then have you guys seen the black and gold yeah, ones? Man. Yep. I really like those. Those yeah. are good representative of the, the city, you know, yeah. the black and yellow of Pittsburgh. And the culture here, you know, tough. This has been a steel city, so. Coach Capel was frustrated with Syracuse game. And one of the comments he made after the game was, you don't know what it means to wear the uniform or the privilege of wearing the uniform. So I want to ask each of you, Juan, I'm going to start with you. Mm -hmm. What did it mean to you to put on a Pitt uniform? Uh, you know, I'm from here. So I lead Pittsburgh, everything, all sports and everything. So I, coming up, watching Pitt. Just being able to be like, okay, I'm, 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 hopefully I can play for them one day, and then actually playing, having the home, you know, my hometown and all the fans and you know the players, it's just all grit, and we all remind each other, like, you know, all of our sports teams are all tough, tough-minded, physical. That's just what I feel like. That's everything to me. Pittsburgh is everything to me. It just, it just means a lot to me, you know, just, just being from here. What captivated me is really the city. The city is like that. The people here are like just tough, hard-nosed people. Yes, it's cold, but you got to get up and go to work. You're going to have to walk up a hill to get there, but that's the Steel City. You know, so it's more than, and you see all the teams, the Penguins, the Steelers, all the teams are built like that. And they, so it's just, you know, just the, the whole culture of the city was what was so good about how we played. And being in the Big East, it was a tough physical conference. We was a tough, we was the toughest. Team. When you put that on, though, did you feel like I'm representing all these people? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. That yep. Was the, I mean, that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I, I felt I was representing my neighborhood, you know, yep. my family, you know, the city. I think they, like I said, I think they got to know the culture to to really understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're 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 just here, and you can't skip over it. You know, you can't just try to bring something new to what's already established. So if you if if you get physical and you know, that, that, that alone can win you a couple of games. Alone. Right. You know, just coming Toughness. in focus and being tough. Yep. So. All right, Dewan Blair is hosting. Yep. Ontario Lett is a guest. <laughs> My name is Jeff Hathorne here on the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're joined by two all Big East players, Ontario Lett and Dewan Blair, as Jeff Capel is out recruiting and we're handling the show tonight. Yeah, we got and it. We got it. Home. <laughs> so what's a question you've always wanted to ask Antonio? How was it? I mean, how, how was it playing in the Big East? Like, do you see the You're going to say back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it was so long. <laughs> <I wanna. laughs> but, like, you know, because it was when y'all were playing, it was just like, wow. Like, I remember sitting, like I told them last show, I was sitting all the way up top watching y'all play. Like, Man, it was crazy because I still have some games, and I watch them, and Basically, like the last five minutes of the game, the referee swallowed their whistle, and oh, it's yeah. just it's, it's a fight. You got like ten people in the paint. You, right, if right. you want to score, you have to take a point. You want to rebound, <laughs> right. you have to take it. So it was fun just playing, man. We was playing against. We was playing in all the NBA arenas. Yeah. We was playing against like now Hall of Fame players. You know NBA players. We was playing against. So it was very competitive. It was fun. You would fit in. You would have fit yeah. right in. <laughs> Very competitive. Is it true that there were times where the games were much easier than the practice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. 
Really? Yeah. That's that was that, I mean Dixon. That was his whole thing. You know, like all right, we're gonna practice hard. So tomorrow mm. on the game, it'd be yeah. a breeze. You know, so it was a lot of blood. You know, sweat. <laughs> yep. So and, and, and all them practices. All right, I'm gonna ask you some. Just throw out some words here, and I want you guys to tell me what you think. Madison Square Garden. Man, just great memories, man. We used to go in there, and I played in two championship games there. We was, what, three or four years in a row in a championship game. Just the fanfare. All the fans used to love coming. They, you know, of course, them New York, they follow us. So it used to just be great times, man. It was, you know, being a Florida kid and coming up here, then going to New York. And mm. It was just great, great, awesome times. Of course, for me, beating Duke, you know, that was huge, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, then winning the Big East Championship, you know, <laughs> it was beating the beat, I mean, beating Roy Hibbert and uh, Georgetown. That was, that was yeah. amazing. I, w I wish on the radio you could see his smile right now. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. West Virginia. I mean, every, every game we played was just wow, especially down, down there, you know, getting hit with batteries. And, Really? <laughs> Quarters. Oh, man. It was just a lot. West Virginia is a lot. Oakland Zoo. Oh, man. Yeah, they're great. That was – Oakland Zoo actually That's... started my senior year, I believe. Well, my junior year. The Oakland Zoo is great. They've always been, you know, the biggest fans, you know. And the best yep. student section yep. you know, uh, in, the, in, in, in the world to me because they, they don't sit down, you know. <laughs> yep. Everybody's jumping and, and, and it just gets you hyped. Diploma. Yep, it was great to get a, you know, especially a, a diploma from here, from Pittsburgh, and was able to come back and get my master's from here. So that's awesome, you know, being, like I said, a small town kid, come up here and accomplish those things plus win. That was sure. the best. That's the best. All right, thanks for stopping by, Ontario. And thank you anytime. Thank you. Ontario thanks, led sir. here with Dewan Blair. It's the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Juan Blair filling in for Jeff Capel here on the Jeff Capel Show from the Peterson Event Center. And, you know, he is one of the more famous owners in any sport. He's a Pittsburgh native, and you got a chance to play for Mark Cuban Dude. for a year. Mm -hmm. When you first met him, what was that interaction like? His energy is, is amazing. You know, he just, he comes to me like, he he already knew me like hey DB what's up like <laughs> he real hip you know but he probably saw you play a lot in oh, college oh yeah of course of course of course he did but you know him being him is just he's so down to earth he's a he's a great guy so I imagine you know he's like jeans and a t-shirt at games yeah you know what he's like all the time yeah he's just then he, he he's always screaming you know he's <laughs> he's always screaming so when they played when when Dallas played the Heat I'll tell you the story Dallas played the Heat and Q was on the uh, sideline. Dirk, like I, they called a timeout. Dirk literally had him. He was like, "Go ahead." He, he made him go into the, <laughs> into the skybox. Really? Yeah, because he was the whole the rest of the series. Really? Said that was, Q was the reason so, they won. <laughs> so Dirk had some, he had some power. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like was there ever a time you're on the bench, and you're like biting your tongue not to laugh? No. I mean, that's just the culture up there. He say what he want, we laugh, we have fun, we enjoy it. <laughs> but you felt like he was one. I mean. He's one of you. Oh, of course, just, of course. He's just very down to earth, and you know, go out and have di uh, dinner with him, and you know, just 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 learn about him. Would you guys tell Pitt stories? Would you talk about Pittsburgh? Oh yeah, he asked me a lot about Pitt. 
he's just he, he's one of them guys who love being from Pittsburgh. You know, that's he wears that on his chest. You know, that's <laughs> Pittsburgh built him. You know, he's tough like that, and that's what he go off of. You you hear about a lot of guys, and you say, well, if they would have played in New York, you would have heard a lot more about them. How good was Dirk? Um, and and in in that vein, if he would have played in a bigger market. Or, or that doesn't a mean team. nothing, man. I mean, just for him, that doesn't mean nothing. That's it's like saying anything. Tim would have played, you know. Them two, like, is beyond, you know, they're beyond great. You know, I've seen it. Just watching them work every day, you know, and, like, be, really being next to them and, you know, just learning from them every day and, and, and just seeing their work habits and how they, how they prepare for games. And it's just all, like, you know, it was all great just seeing it. And I was just soaking it all in. It seemed like at times those Spurs Mavericks games would get pretty oh, yeah. intense. Is that true? Is that a rivalry? Of course, I was. I, I was on both sides. So, so <laughs> you were what? Four years in San Antonio. Four years in San Antonio. One one year. So the next year you're in Dallas and you're having to play against those guys that you built such a relationship with. We was we was cool off the court. We'll go to dinner, but on the court, I don't know you. I'm trying to tear your head off. <laughs> and they knew that too. You know, coming in, they knew I knew all the plays and. You know, and that's why I was so tough. That was the toughest series they had that year, you know. So. All right, as we continue, I, I, I have to bring up another tough series for you. It, it was an epic series that you Miami were a part Heat. of. <laughs> Miami Heat, San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. Dewan Blair in for Jeff Capel here on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And the ball comes out. Touchdown, Panthers! You can't believe what just happened here at Heinz Field. Duan Blair hosting today for the Jeff Capel Show. And Duan, I, in risk of bodily injury, I'm going to bring up one of the great NBA series of all time. Best of the series. decade. It was uh, you guys... Swept the Lakers yeah. in San Antonio, we're talking about. Yeah. I think it was 4-2 to two over Steph. And did you sweep Memphis? Yep, just got them out of the way. And now, here you are, it's game six. The way the series went, it was just wow. You know, um, Danny and Gary, you know, when they got hot in two games, and it's like, okay, we're going, we finally going to get LeBron. <laughs> you know, I, I, th I thought it was in the, in the bag. And, so you guys were up five with 26. All right, we up five with 25. Okay, we up five with 25 seconds ago, and then Kawhi gets fouled, makes one free throw, miss one. Timmy gets it, did the hook, his, his famous hook that he hit on me a million times. He misses that. LeBron comes down, hit a three at the top of the key, come back down. Tony does some, some wild, wild layup. He misses, come down, LeBron shoots it. Comes off, Chris Bosh grabs it, gives it to Ray Allen. Ray Allen make the shot. It's a deep two. Yeah. <laughs> I say his foot on the line. It was a series changer. It was just everything, I think. LeBron had us figured out, I, I, I think, you know, in game seven. Like, he wasn't letting Danny shoot. He's running everybody off the line. That's like six Hall of Famers, uh, three on each side. Oh, man. And I can't imagine. What, how did you – like after game six, was it kind of like how to try to rebound after? We had it, game six. And now we got to stay a couple extra days, you know, just to play in game seven, you know, against LeBron in Miami. You know, it just it just was all it was all a blur after after game six when when they won. And game seven was a great game too, but it was just you know games. Everybody remember game six and the shot. So how tough has it been since? The accident with Kobe. Oh man, it uh, it hurt me a lot, uh, especially you know knowing knowing Kobe, you know, you know for eight years and uh, just just knowing the you know the spear he had, you know, and who he was and and how he carried himself, you know, um, as a person, and he will always, you know, all the young players, he he he's talking, he's giving out, you know. A lot of all the game, 
you know, he's just he's just being Kobe. He was a great, great person. So he would give advice. He would tell Yeah, he that. give he, he give all the game. He was just he was just like my rookie season, we had the NBA cares and they teamed us up, you know, with vets, you know, the rookies and the vets and uh my I had Kobe, you know, and, and uh he was First off, he was just blown away because Shenley played Lower Marion, you know, and he he went back to that. Oh wow! You know, he is like, oh yeah, my team, be, you know, he, I, I didn't even. <laughs> I'm like, really, that's what he, that? that's what he said. Yeah, yeah, he really did, you know. So it was like, it was, it was, it was that was special, you know. Just I wish we'd have beat him so I could have, you know, <laughs> talk my talk. But it was just special that knowing that he watched it and playing him every, you know, four times every year and. You're just two Pennsylvania kids. Yeah, time, yeah, yeah. He was, he, 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 was, he was a real good person, you know. Cole was really, really a good person. Well, as we continue, we'll wrap up. Dwan Blair filling in for Jeff Capel on the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. That's our last segment here with Dwan Blair filling in for Jeff Capel. And Dwan, I... I know you've had a chance to watch this team. Well, heck, you're a student. You should be in the zoo, by the way. <laughs> oh, uh, you might be God. conspicuous, but that's all right. I think, I think that's what they need, you know, me being in the zoo. There you go. Going crazy. There you I go. Might, I, might, I might do that. You, you know, you should probably do it just to f experience it. Right, right. You know? the zoo and the hopping great. around and standing. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the only one sitting down, though, because I ain't standing the whole game. Did you ever hear, like, any of their little insults like the oh man my favorite was left right sit down <laughs> <laughs> they did a thing with uh what was it tim welsh the old providence coach or yeah, yeah, yeah. and they did a fat guy in little coat with him <laughs> once it was uh, dude it was hysterical because <laughs> he was not a, a big man yeah. I, I was i was laughing that was a good one um you've watched but you watch this team play mm -hmm. what do you think about the future with with jeff here and what would you tell the kids about Taking it, taking that next step. Um, I, th I just think the future is bright. You know, um, Coach Capel, you know what he's doing. And he comes from Duke and you know, okay, uh, Oklahoma. So he, he, his resume is amazing. So he knows what he's doing. As long as the players, you know, um, really dig down, he can't bring their toughness, and, and that's that's something that you got to bring. You know, and he can, he can just guide guide the players to being great. And and once they all go. Everybody all in, it's, it's, it's going to be amazing. I feel like um, he doesn't have, you know, any leaders on the team. You know, he's the only leader, and he can't beat out on the court, too. So, you know, um, I think they just need a player to step up and really, you know, get down and get, in, get, in, get on everyone, you know, equally, you know, and, and, and take, take account, you know, accountability to, you know, everything that, you know, they're doing just so everyone – and see that he's in, you know, our leader, you know, and, and they follow. That's just what I, I find it, and I didn't play it at your level, but when Jeff talks sometimes, like, I'm ready to go charge through a oh, wall. Yeah. Do you find that when you talk to him? Oh, yeah, he's very, he's very you know, motivational. Um, he going to get you, you know, juices going, and, and you just got to be ready. Like I said, you got to dig, dig deep. It's, 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 it's a you thing once, you know, um, you're not playing to your, to your capability. All right, the Panthers – Back in action at NC State and then at Georgia Tech. Dwan, nice job. Thank you, man. I appreciate you coming appreciate in, you. filling in. It was good me. telling some stories. Thank you, man. Sorry about bringing up the finals. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> uh, Ontario Lett, we thank him as you well. Yep. Kale Berger, Amanda Sile, Matt Plisga. We'll see you next week here on the Everyone. Jeff Capel Show.